Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. We're recording in the garage today to start us off and then we'll be going outside as we do an install and a little bit of a product review. I'm very excited about this product. It is behind me right here. It's the Takancha P3 electronic brake controller. And if you've been following the channel for a while, you'll know that usually when I go to events in my drift car, I just street drive it, which is great unless something breaks and then it's kind of a huge pain. When I go to events farther away, if I go you know, eight plus hours to a drift event, I will rent a trailer for the weekend which is pretty expensive. It's always a different trailer. I always have to check and see how the car is gonna fit. Don't know if I can trust the brakes or if the tires are aired up, all sorts of drama with that. So if you follow me on Discord or Instagram, which is just at Kamatrick, you will know that uh, if you've seen the hints, I actually got a trailer of my own and I'm very excited for that. You guys will be seeing a lot more of that soon because when you get a trailer, you need to do a few things and I got a used trailer. So I'm gonna have to do a little bit of maintenance and also I gotta get my truck which I have never invested in one before as a rental person, up to spec to pull this trailer. The trailer has electronic brakes, and so I need a brake controller. When you get a trailer, it'll have brakes on it, but your truck cannot actuate those brakes unless you buy an additional piece. I have the Takancha P3. This is part number 90195, and we'll take a quick look at what's in the box here. This is a really nice brake controller. Of course, it's gonna come with some instructions. It comes with a little wiring pigtail if you want to wire up your own, which is certainly an option, and a couple of brackets, which we'll be using to mount it to the vehicle. And then the main piece, of course, here's the unit itself. It's a basic five button design. You've got four on the front, up and down, which is gonna change the power of the braking that you're gonna get. Then you've got a settings button, and here this is your boost, which effectively controls how aggressively the brakes engage. Uh, based on the set power that you have over here. The fifth button lives down here, and this is a manual override switch. So you can effectively engage the trailer's brakes. Uh, it defaults to zero and it's spring-loaded here, and it goes all the way up to what is 100% of the brakes that you will get based on your power setting here. The base unit does come with a pigtail that you can solder into your vehicle if you want to, and you can save a few dollars that way, but I elected to go with a separate product. And that is because Takancha also makes plug and play wiring kits specific to your vehicle. I have a 2004 uh, GMC Silverado. So this is part number 3015-P, but you can look on their website and find the ones that are gonna be best for your vehicle. And it was fairly cheap too. I wouldn't have minded to wire my own stuff up, but honestly, you can plug and play these. It was $15, so I felt like I couldn't go wrong. And now I've got a spare pigtail if I ever need to make it work for anything else. And here's a closer look at that connector. You can see it's got not only the black plug, which plugs into the back of the brake controller, but also this brown plug, which plugs into a dedicated port for trailer brakes on the Silverado I have. That's what's in the box. Now let's go out to the Kame truck and I'll show you how easy it is to install these. So we'll come over to the truck and everything that we're gonna be doing will happen right under here. Now on most of your trucks, you're going to have a small additional sort of fuse box hiding under the vehicle and it's right here. We're gonna take this off by removing just with our hand this little nut. So we'll just reach in here and begin removing this nut. It just comes all the way off like so and then this pulls off. There are two, one right here and one on the other side, little plastic hinges we can pull. On the back side is a diagram and of course that corresponds to the block inside and this middle sort of second from the left piece says trailer six way and it's brown that's the connector we're going to plug in so that corresponds to this second connector from the left right here the connector has a little blue section on the bottom and it's got this hinge here on the top so it goes with the hinge up and the blue piece down and we just plug it in you'll hear it click in we'll just move the wire off to the side for now and then you will use the hole in the cover here and align it with that little screw to put it back on. Then with that piece clamped back on, we'll just tighten this screw all the way back down. Now the cord on these kits is not that long and most people mount their brake controllers down by their knees somewhere. I'm gonna show you a couple of the common places people consider. One thing you'll frequently see and the previous center of my truck clearly did is to just drill it into the dash and keep it right here. Personally, I'm not a huge fan because I feel like I'm gonna hit this with my knees when I'm entering and exiting the vehicle. So if anything, I would keep it on a similar axis, but put it more towards the center where I'm not gonna hit it. Personally, I was mildly interested in keeping the unit actually up on top of the dash somewhere so that it could sit up there like this. 
but the cord is not quite long enough. I think I'm actually gonna go about right here so that again, it's out of the way of my knees and it's down here around where the all wheel drive control is anyway. And if I put it right here, I should be in a pretty good spot. Of course, stuff is never easy. This is in the way, so we're going to shift into neutral. Hopefully, see if we can't get it all the way out of our way here. I'm gonna go ahead and get this screw started before I put it in all the way. I'll just make things easier. And we'll go ahead and anchor this in. Now we drill one more hole. Line it up and things will be good to go. In my case, where I decided to mount these, the screws actually poke through into this little compartment. I don't really use this much, but just in case anybody ever does, I'm gonna take these screws back out and blunt these tips. Some would say this is overkill, but I've always focused on craftsmanship with anything that I do. There we go, that'll be perfect. I'll hand tighten that to make it easy on the plastic. And we're all set. Here's the interface cable for the brake controller. And once you have its bracket mounted, you're gonna to want to run and secure that wire under your vehicle to the uh, mounting location. You can see I've secured it to the HVAC tubing with a couple of zip ties. So now we'll pull it through and plug it into the brake controller here. And we are ready as it powers on to mount it. And it's gonna go right about here. And there you have it, our Takancha P3 is hooked in and powered up. And now we can check the fitment of our Takancha P3 and I can already tell I'm really going to like it. It's very easy to read, it's facing right at me. I can reach all the buttons as well as the uh, manual control lever. And best of all, it's not anywhere over here where I'm gonna be catching it with my feet or my knees when I get into and out of the vehicle. I think this is gonna be perfect. Now, if you would like to see how to actually set up your P3 and essentially calibrate it to your brakes, I'm gonna be making a video on that as well. When that video is ready, I will link it in a card over here. And in the meantime, check out the channel, subscribe if you enjoyed this, and I will see you next time. Peace.